All right, today we're gonna to talk about some of the cool things you can get with the latest versions of Betaflight Configurator and Black Box Explorer. Okay, first up, Betaflight Configurator. If you're not on the very latest release, which is 10.3.1, go ahead and download that. I'll drop the link below in the video description, but essentially you go to the GitHub site, go to the releases page, and then you can download the version you need here for your operating system, obviously uh, Windows 32, uh, it's for Windows operating systems, and you have Linux, Mac, so on and so forth. Uh, it's really not that much different than uh, if you have 10.3, but there is one, I didn't see if it was in 10.3 or not, but I know it's in 10.3.1 that I noticed this, is if you are on the uh, flashing page and check the show unstable releases, that's where you will get the option for seeing the uh, you know, the different RCs and so on and so forth. But note up here now, there's also this release candidates uh, drop down, so you can isolate it to just the release candidates and uh, development. So now instead of going to the Jenkins website to download the latest builds that are constantly occurring as new features and bugs get fixed and things of that nature get done, Instead of going to the Jenkins site and downloading them the hex file manually and loading it here local, you can just flash it right here. You click on it, hit load firmware. It even shows you what the differential is, what the change was for that nightly build, and you can flash it right from the configurator. So pretty cool. Also, for people that really want the AKK, our, you know, race day quads uh, VTX patch for 3.3 or 3.4, boom. There you go. So you have a 3.3 version and a 3.4 version that are available uh, for you to flash uh, if you need that. No windows go away. Other than that, the configurator, uh, if, you if you're not on the latest release, uh, if you have a, a pretty old configurator, you definitely want to upgrade for 3.4. Uh, when that comes out and stable here in the next, it should be out tomorrow, in the next couple days, uh, just for the filter settings tab itself, uh, just so it's easy to set the stage one, stage two, filters for uh, cascade on the gyro and the d-term um, and then there's other little little things within the configurator but most of it's most of it's the same uh, that's those are the two major things I saw the filtering and then also I just noticed this uh, how they changed the the flashing page let's move on to the black box Explorer so black box Explorer uh, there's been a lot of focus I made a video about black box Explorer beta flight uh, probably in February, and I actually recommended using Clean Flight's Black Box Explorer at the time, and I stand by that. It was better. But at this point, uh, the Betaflight devs really have uh, done a massive amount of work, and much thanks to those guys for doing this. Uh, and there's been a lot of, like I said, emphasis on uh, improvements in Betaflight. So I would, you know, if you're on Clean Flight version, get off of that, get onto the Betaflight one. Uh, to do that, uh, there's a self-install, so you don't need to use the uh, Chrome app anymore. What I recommend is going to this website here. I'll drop the link below. You would go into this Borsby black box log viewer, pick your operating system, and then you can go download the executable there as well and install it. Once it's installed, uh, again, you don't need Chrome anymore. So, so you can just go ahead and launch it. What's really cool is you can just launch it and auto open a log that you had open previously you can pin them so that's kind of a nice little feature you can always hit new window here that's been in there for a while you'll see the interface looks a little different now when you go ahead and do a spectrum trace on a log you know you just click on uh, one of the traces here but after the spectrograph comes up you can go ahead and hit the maximize screen here uh, which is the maximize button there you can notice it's not up here any longer and um, I think everything else is kind of the same and then from that point forward you can just click on the different uh, the different traces to see the spectrum analysis of those you can reminimize here you have the slide slide windows there as well the uh, if you're looking for quick tips note that it's up here now show shortcuts so you can click on that and see all the different shortcuts and what I'm going to do is make available my uh, settings that I use for saved uh, trace setups for looking at logs. The, what you'll be able to do is download this file. So I'll go ahead and put that at the filter calc. The link, link will be below again. And once you have that downloaded, you can copy it to your clipboard. Don't rename it or anything. And you will go to this 
directory on your computer with the installed app. So it's going to be, uh, and I'll drop this um, link below. It'll say percent percent profile. So go to your Windows profile, not mine. And we go to app data, local, beta flight, black box explorer, data user, blah, blah, blah. You would jump into this uh, directory that's under the local app settings with black box explorer closed. What I would recommend doing is renaming the current file to put old behind it or save it off somewhere and then paste in the new file you just downloaded. Then when you open black box explorer, you will have preset uh, keys on your keyboard that you can change your traces. So if I now press key one, that will give me essentially what I use for looking at big picture of how the quad's working. You know, RC rates coming in, the debug mode, if you recorded the pre-filtered noise, which I always do, gyro, pit error, which is the difference between the RC rates and the gyro. That's what really drives the PIND. And then, um, you can see the PIND there and then what's going out to the motors. From there, then I have a you know, shortcut key two has RC commands, which is different than RC rates. Then you can look at just the roll access, the pitch access, or the yaw access, specifically for PIND and then the PID sums. I don't use that so much. But then if you skip and go to zero, so I pressed zero down for a shortcut key, that will show you your roll, pitch, and yaw. This is your debug with your gyro overlaid it onto it. So this is, you know, the red is pre-filtered, then this is filtered, and then this is your RC rate. So if I look at just one of these, you know, the quad is telling it to follow the, the yellow line. What it's actually doing uh, with the noise is the red line, and then the, uh, call that a uh, pale blue, is the filter gyro trace so that's after all the filtering so you can see it's not really hitting the yellow line everywhere and that's obviously called is the pit error that's the differential on the error so that's a good one uh, I use this a lot this is where I usually come up and I'll start looking at spectrum traces and so on and so forth so this is you know again roll pitch and y'all just noticed how about roll r-o-l-l -L? Pitch and y'all, sorry about that. Um, anyways, then it's your P term, your D term. Then if you press nine on your keyboard, that will look at just your roll. So it's the pit error, your roll, P, I, and D, and then your gyro trace, and then your pit sum. Uh, usually when you're looking, you know, for me, when I'm looking at, you know, bounce back, uh, I'm looking at this trace. So this is your, you know, you're entering the roll this is through the, the roll itself. This is the gyro trace. You can see the D term spiking up to arrest it. And then you can see the I term relax doing its, its work and it's not trying to pull down for a bounce back. And you can see that gyro coming boom right back down onto zero. So a nice sharp stop and that's it. So that's a good one for that. If you press the eight key, then that is the same thing for pitch. And then the seven key is the same thing for y'all. Uh, right now, uh, if you press six is blank on this template, you can fill it in with whatever you want. Five on the template is basically looking at smoothing for your RC rates. You know, your RC commands need to be smooth through interpolation or filter. So we're looking at that there and what the effects are, how if there's a, a jut or a, a quick change in your RC rate up here, how is that affecting your pit error and your D term and how is that going out to your motors? So that's number five. So in this template, shortcut keys three, four, and six are blank. Any of those, you could set up your own traces, hold down shift and press the key or change any of these, just like it shows here, if I hit the quick tips. Zero to nine, if you hold down shift and have a trace set up, it will make it that new shortcut key and then you can call it from zero to nine there as well. So again, it's just a little quick tip, little file put out there. So if you're not interested in setting those traces up manually, you can start with this as a template. It's what I use, been using for a long time now. Seems to serve me pretty well. You can bounce back and forth depending on what things you want to look at fairly easily just by hitting some keys on your keyboard. And uh, again, you can modify anything you want there and go from there. 
Uh, just looking at some of this stuff in Black Box Explorer here, this is basically uh, showing your zoom, your expo, and your uh, smoothing. So one of the things you want to make sure is that smoothing is off, when, specifically when you're looking at noise. And if you're looking at, um, you know, kind of bounce back and want to really get a sense of the influence of terms, if you turn off expo, then you can really get a sense of how much the D term weight in the PID sum is versus the P term. So you can see the P term is a much stronger influence on the PID sum than the D term just with the magnitude differential. But to really see that stuff, you have to turn off Expo. And you can use that back and forth to, to see different things. Obviously, how can you have D term have more weight? Well, you bump up your D term, your D term in your, in your PIDs, or reduce your P term in your PIDs. That's, that's all it really does. So the weight, the extent of how high these lines are and how much influence they ultimately have on the pit sum, which is then drives the motors, goes into the mixer and drives the motors, is really all in those, those P and, and D terms and I term as well. Okay, that's it. Just a short one. Just want to get that information out about where to get these, these new great tools, uh, updated ones that work uh, pretty darn well, uh, and get that template out there for people to use if there's any interest in that. And... Uh, Thanks. I hope this helped.